Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Blessed Resurrection Day. I have no doubt that on this day there are many, many sermons, messages being preached on our Lord's resurrection. And I think that's perfectly fine. However, your, your typical church is comprised mostly of believers. And I think that included within that Easter, and I'll call it that, I'd prefer to say Resurrection Day, message ought to be something that believers are very closely identified with and that would be His death, burial, and resurrection. That when Christ was raised from the dead, we were raised from the dead with Him. It's a wonderful thing to preach on our Lord's resurrection. We know that He raised from the dead. There's no little doubt among Christians. There, there is that segment of Christianity that does not believe that. But in general, for the most part, most Christians believe that He rose from the dead. And you can go to church on Sunday morning on Easter, Easter Sunday morning, and you can hear a great message about Christ risen from the dead. And pastors and, and preachers will come from different angles in order to uh, shed a, a lot of light, bring a lot of light, uh, uh, shed light on the fact that He rose from the dead. And we know that. We know that He rose from the dead. There is a dynamic that is associated with His resurrection from the dead that is very little spoken about, and it amazes me that it is so little talked about. Because our being raised with Him is a dynamic that we certainly wouldn't want to overlook. Uh, well, Steve, I don't really remember being raised from the dead with Him. And that's just sort of symbolic and I would beg to differ. You know, there, there is symbolism. There are things that are symbolic that's, that's not really true from a literal standpoint. You know, well, we could say, well, and I wouldn't, but we could say, well, Jesus was raised from the dead, but that was mostly symbolic. He didn't really literally raise from the dead. And it has, certainly has a place in Christianity, and it certainly has a meaning. We are to understand a lot from that, but he didn't really literally raise from the dead. And of course, most Christians, at least most Christians I know, would argue vehemently that he did literally raise from the dead. I believe this book teaches us without question that Christ rose, literally rose from the dead. But what is also true is that we rose from the dead with him when he was crucified, we were crucified with Him. When He was buried, we were buried with Him. And when He rose from the dead, we were raised with Him. And that has to mean something. Because God doesn't put any information out there for us to, for our consideration that doesn't have a heavy import. It does make a, a difference whether I believe that I was raised with Him from the dead or that I was not. If I'm ignorant of the fact that I rose with Christ from the dead, then the dynamic of that truth is really not worked out in my life. As we studied through Colossians, uh, that's on our playlist, we went through that, that book verse by verse, if then you were raised with Christ, and that is a first class condition, it is since you were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. What are those things that are above? Well, that's heaven. That's uh, golden streets. And that's, you know, uh, uh, apples so big that we can't lift them. Uh, that's, that's grass that's it's so tall that it cuts our feet. You know, everything is wonderful in heaven. Everything is, is grand. There's no, no more pain, no more sorrow. That's, that's got to be talking about heaven. Those things which are above. 
That's heaven. I don't think the text is talking about that at all. If you look at it in context, those things which are above are those things which pertain to the finished work of Christ. The verse goes on to say, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. What does it mean that He's sitting at the right hand of God? It means that His work is finished. When He was on the cross and He cried out, It is finished. I don't believe that He was simply referring to His physical death, but primarily the main thrust of those words, the main import of those words, were that you, couldn't add, you cannot add anything or take anything away from what Christ did. Well, Steve, I don't feel like I'm raised from the dead. You have been. You know, you as a Christian, you can live your entire life never, never knowing and never understanding that you were raised with Christ from the dead. And you can live your entire life trying to be raised from the dead. We were baptized. That The word baptized literally means identified with. You were identified with Christ in His death, in His burial, and in His resurrection. Now, I'm going to go so far as to say that when Christ was, was crucified, we were crucified with Him. When He was buried, we were buried with Him. When He was raised, we were raised with Him. And we, when, he was, when He ascended to the Father, when He ascended to heaven, that we, because we were in Him when He raised, that we, were, we ascended with Him. In fact, I have a verse that tells me in very plain, simple language that I've been raised to walk with Him, to walk in newness of life. And that life is His life, resurrection life. Christians live under the umbrella of our identification with Christ in His death, burial, and resurrection. And there's, there's a reason for that, and the reason for that is to understand that His work was finished, we can't add anything to it, that when He was crucified, we were crucified with Him. That means we don't crucify ourselves. We don't clean up the old man. We don't try to make ourselves acceptable to God. We died to sin, self, the law, the world, Satan, and even death itself. Six things, six things that Scripture clearly points out that we have died to and so we're not trying to accomplish something on our own, which God says in past time, in actual real time, in past time, you were literally, literally, not symbolically, but you were literally crucified with Christ. Why? How is that? Because you were in Him when He died. He chose you in, in Him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world. So you were in Christ when He died. You were in Christ when He was buried and He was laid in a tomb. You were in Christ when He rose from the dead. You were in Christ when He ascended and, and He's sitting at the right hand of God. That means His work is finished. The finished work of Christ and that's what we walk in. We walk in the finished work of Christ. To me, this day, this resurrection day, this blessed resurrection day, to me, means much more than just some message that I've heard a thousand times about Christ raising from the dead. And folks, I'm not trying to minimize the import of Christ being raised from the dead or the importance of, of Christ being raised from the dead. I'm not trying to devalue the greatness of our Lord rising from the dead. What I am suggesting is, is that we need to understand that when Christ was raised from the dead, we were raised with Him to walk, that is, conduct ourselves, behave, behave, live as who we are, not as something that we're not. It's always amazed me how, how, how much Christians strive to try to accomplish that which God says, I've already done it. It's already done. You've died with me. You were buried with me. You were raised with me to walk in newness of life. That is how closely that you, you have been identified with Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 6, starting at verse 3, I read, Or do you not know 
Do you not know? This is something that we need to know. That as many of us as were baptized, identified with Christ Jesus, were baptized into His death, therefore we were buried with Him through that identification into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Newness of life. We already have a life that we walk in. We don't create our own life. We don't try to struggle and, and, and manage or maintain some walk that's according to law. We've been raised with Christ to walk in newness of life, not in oldness of the letter, which is law. For if we have been united together in the likeness of, a de of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of of His resurrection, and you can say, well, Steve, that's talking about our bodies being raised someday, and I believe it certainly must include that, but it is not certainly not limited to that. Knowing this, that our old man, the old man, that's the old flesh, fleshly carnal nature that basically is, you know, the flesh profits nothing, we're told. We can't clean up the old man. God is not working to clean up the old man. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that in order that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Are you enslaved to the old nature, to the fleshly nature, to uh, this erroneous idea that somehow that God has left, He's done His part, Okay, and He's left the rest up to you. He's left it up to you to try to clean up your life and manage your life in the right way and to do everything that, that this book says to do. And, and in those areas in which you don't, then you just, you, well, you just work on it a little harder, you know, so that you could somehow achieve some level of, of Christian maturity or spiritual maturity that God would have you, you know, arrive at. Dearly beloved, we are to walk worthy of the calling wherewith we were called. We have been accepted in the Beloved. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ. There's nothing that we could possibly add to the resurrection of Jesus Christ that would make us more accepted, acceptable to God. There's nothing that we could do in this life to make us any more righteous than what we already are. I preached on this channel, I don't, I don't know how much, about the fact that every single believer in Jesus Christ has been made the righteousness of God in Christ. That when the Father looks down upon us, He sees us as righteous as His Son. Can you imagine that? Why is it so many Christians are, are, are struggling and defeated when we've been raised with Christ to walk in newness of life, His life, His resurrection life, we don't operate, we don't function out of the old man, we function out of the new man, we live according to the truth concerning what, what we are, who we are. God has, has given us an abundance of information that has, without doubt, left us without any question, without any question, we are left believing that we cannot add anything to the finished work of Christ. And we preach Christ and Him crucified. That's what we preach. We don't preach ourselves. We're ambassadors for Christ. If you've been following us in our study through 2 Corinthians, an ambassador, every one of us is an ambassador for Christ. We all have a message. We all have a ministry and we all have a life and that life is Christ. It is, our life is not our own. We were bought with a price. Therefore, we glorify God in our body. And the way that we do that is we walk worthy of the calling wherewith we were called. That is not striving to become worthy. It is understanding that we are worthy and that God has accepted us in the beloved and we walk accordingly. I'm told in Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 9, not to lie to one another since we have put off the old man with his deeds. We have put off the old man with his deeds. 
If you go back to Romans 6.11, the first command given us in Romans, the first imperative mood in the grammar, the first command that we are given is in Romans 6.11 to reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Reckon. Well, Steve, I've tried reckoning and that just doesn't work. I still sin. Dearly beloved, the verse... Romans 6.11, reckon yourself dead to sin, is not asking you to, to, to reckon yourself dead to sin so that you'll stop sinning. The reason that God gave us that provision of reckoning ourselves dead to sin was because we can't stop sinning. We have an old man that does nothing but sin. But at the same time, we've been made a new creation in Christ and we've been given a new nature which cannot sin, according to 1 John, because His seed abides in us and we cannot sin. The new man is sinless. We have a new man that doesn't need improvement and we have an old man that can't be fixed up, patched up, or repaired. If we go back to Colossians chapter 2, let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humil humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he's not seen, vainly puffed up, puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. God causes the increase. One plants, one waters, God causes the growth. You do not cause growth in your, in your life as a Christian. God does. Therefore, if you died, or since, again, that's a first-class condition, with Christ from the basic principles of the world, and that world is, I, if you look in, in Scripture, and it's particularly in the New Testament, you look at that word world, that world is in always, most often always used without exception unless it's talking about the planet, the world, as in the earth. It's talking about a world religious system. That world religious system that Christ said would put you to death thinking it was doing God service. Since you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject, subject yourselves to regulations? Regulations. And I don't know how many Christians today, this day, on Resurrection Day, on the most blessed day of the Christian's life, in my humble opinion, are going about living, trying to live to God according to regulations, law, human merit. Why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. Dearly beloved, what I wanted you to know this morning was is that this, this blessed Easter, this blessed resurrection day, however you want to want to phrase it, is a day to rejoice in. Not only because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, but because we were raised from the dead with Him. We have been so closely identified with Him. A spiritual baptism, this is not a baptism in water, this is a spiritual baptism, a work of God. We've been so closely, closely identified with Him and with one another as members of the body of Christ, that there is nothing that we could possibly do to add or take away from the finished work of Christ. When He cried out on that, on that cross, it is finished, He meant what He said, it is finished, you can't add anything to it, you can't take anything away from it, just like this book, we don't want to add anything or take anything away from it. When it comes to the truth of the Word of God and, and its import and its effectiveness in our lives, we all, all, every one of us need to understand that we have been so closely identified with Christ that when He was raised from the dead, we were raised with Him. Raised with Him to walk in newness of life. His life. His life.
Look, I love you all. I truly do. Blessed Resurrection Day. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.